I forgot to tell you that I am also reading Vicious. I am currently like in the middle, right at the beginning of part two. My feelings thus far, I love Victor Vale, I want to be Victor Vale, he has style, questionable actions, but so does Eli. I didn't realize this book was Dark Academia or classified as Dark Academia. I love the little trio of Mitch, Sydney, and Vic. Victor is very caring and gentle towards Sydney. Sydney's very reluctant to reveal her power because of what Eli did to her and you realize that Eli is actually kind of an extremist and wants to eradicate all the extraordinaries. Yeah, I love it so far. Very easy to read. I think I'll get through it really fast because I've only been reading it for like maybe two days, but I've spaced out those two days. So yeah. So it has been a few days. And it's not gonna focus. Oh my god, I love how Victor just Eli gets Sydney's drawing, I'm assuming, and then a single sentence I made a friend from Victor. <laughs> oh, that's the most shadiest thing, but I love it. Now we have a problem. So right you do, Eli. I am 200 pages in and I have to say, Eli's thinking is warped. You can see so many gaps in it, but obviously there's gonna be gaps in his logic because he's doing bad things. I love how he's like, uh, I'm not responsible for my actions, only God is. But yet then he's like, Eos were an affront to nature, to God. And you're an EO, Eli. <laughs> but you're different, no, of course you're different. Uh, I find it interesting to see how like they rationalize their horrible actions but all in all Victor is still obviously my favorite but yeah now at least we can see where Eli comes from even though his logic is really warped. Eli is really not as powerful as we see him through Victor's eyes because the way that the first part of this book is built up because Eli's like gone and done all this stuff for the last 10 years that you hear through like the media and whatnot but he is not actually quite as powerful as we think so I am even more intrigued by that now. Another thing that I wanted to add on is I love how this story is written and how it's not completely linear and you're also going to different POVs so you, you get a really good gauge of all the characters in this cast, even when they're on opposing sides. Like, I've just read, I don't know if it's Serena's POV or if it's Eli's POV, but it's when Eli and Serena first meet. I instantly like Serena. I, I initially didn't because, well, she had a hand in trying to kill her little sister. Uh, maybe not directly, but still, she betrayed her. But she's really giving it straight to Eli when they first meet. <laughs> Like saying everything about you is chock full of self-loathing. I'm not judging. I know the feeling. And she like calls him out on all of these feelings and his reasoning as to why he wants to kill her and other EOs. So I appreciate her for that. So I don't know. She's very likable, but also her power. She can bend people's will, I think. So everyone is complacent to her, which is why she can get the truth out of Eli so easily and why he's really not a threat to her. I don't know, I have to read on, but I really like Serena right now. That might change. Also, not gonna lie, just in this specific chapter, it's probably gonna change, but Eli and Serena in this meeting and their little interactions where Eli can't lie to her kind of cute. Dare I say in a way he's being controlled which is reminding me of a certain other character from another book but and it's kind of making him more sympathetic. God I don't even know who to call the villain now. I mean like obviously Eli needs to be stopped. There's no... his logic is just warped, but it's that whole thing of seeing the way people get to these sort of conclusions and you're like, Um, I don't like what you're doing, but in the same breath it makes complete sense how you got to where you are, and I feel kind of sympathetic in a way, but also, no, stop. So I finished Vicious earlier this morning. 
it is night time now. I completely forgot to film it. <laughs> but these are my final thoughts. I absolutely enjoyed this book and I loved how the chapters were really short and just everything about it was so digestible and like you keep wanting to go back for more. I might have already said this in a couple videos back, but this story overall is really you seeing how like these villains just try to like justify their actions with their own reasoning even though it's warped but it's just full of shades of grey morality which I love because no one in this book is good everyone is criminal in some way but I really like the fact that Victor brought in this kind of found family with Sydney and Mitch but then like because as you go into it you're like, oh, I'm sympathetic towards Victor. But then you, in the second half, you see Eli's point of view and you're like, oh, I still don't like you, but I see how you got to where you are. And not gonna lie, him and Serena were kind of cute together in their backstory, but then things with her power just si simmerated. No, what's the word? Insinuated, no, incinerated. <laughs> But yeah, I'm very excited to pick up the second book. I believe it's going to be a trilogy, but this is my first Be Ishwar book and I am hooked. I really love her writing and I actually think I might pick up The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue because I initially, like everyone hyped that book up and I was like, eh, I'm not interested. I've never read one of her books, but now I'm interested. So yeah, new favorite author here. So. That is vicious done. <laughs>